This paper is coated on one side with a special coating. Now, when you get this paper, you will notice that on one side, there'll be some very faint type that will tell you to print on the other side. Now, it may be in the center here, or it may be on the top and bottom here. We've done it different ways. Always feed your laser printer one sheet at a time. There are no special settings that you need to set your printer for. Just print like you do any other color or black and white print on your laser printer. I happen to use an HP ColorJet Pro. I believe it's called a 254M or something like that. Uh, but you can use any laser printer. They all use a toner and that's what works best for the paper. Another thing that you might notice on some sheets is on an edge you might see a little bit of the coating actually as a transparent little uh, or translucent uh, I don't know how to describe it but you can you'll be able to see just a little bit of it coming off the edge this will not hurt your printer but if you want you just slide your thumb and finger on it like this take it off you're good to go your paper is ready to be printed on and the question is can you use this in your inkjet or your laser? And the answer is you can use it in both. However, the paper is designed for laser printer only. So when I say you can use it for both, if you were to use this paper with an inkjet printer, yes, you will be able to make a transfer. However, the colors will not be as vibrant and it will not transfer all of the image. In other words, uh, you'll still see a shadow of the image still on the paper here. And then just slowly peel it back like so. Okay, so we got some left behind there. that just comes off really easy. It's not a rubbing. You don't do really any rubbing. It's just to get the corner started so you can grab onto something like that and then you just peel it off. That's the whole purpose of this paper is so you don't have to do that, you know, the standard way that people do it where they they wet the whole thing and then they rub, 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 rub and then you got millions of these little pieces all over the place and you know, this is just I just do this to get it started like that so you have some kind of a tab or something to hold on to and then you just peel it off just like that all right so as you can see you certainly can use the inkjet printer with the quick transfer paper but it is slightly lighter than if with the laser so you can compare here let me just tear this off we're gonna be we're gonna do this so that you guys can you guys can all see the differences here so take a look at that and you can see that you get a lighter version of the original so this was the original inkjet and then that's what you get left now for example I went ahead and I created some Rick's Can Do It smiley faces here using uh, Affinity Designer software. And uh, I printed a sheet of four of these little smiley faces and then one big one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a t-shirt out of this big one later so stick around for that. Uh, this one here I made four of them so we can do four different demonstrations with all the same design. This is printed with my color, uh, color jet uh, laser printer. So again, use a laser printer, especially if you want the highest quality possible. And then you'll notice on the other side, it shows you right here the words that says print on the other side. So 
it's printed on the correct side. What do you use to transfer the image from the quick transfer paper onto your substrate, whether it be wood or fabric or paper, cardboard or whatever? And my recommendation is it depends on the substrate. For example, if you're going to do it on wood, and I like these nice flat wooden pieces here where uh, they're already pretty smooth and clean, uh, but there are just different things that you can get that, uh, like those little round uh, wood slices that are uh, pretty well pre-prepared. If, if it's a little rough, take some sandpaper, sand it down. But if you're going to be doing it on wood, use gel medium. I have had lots of experience, great experience with gel medium. With wood, I recommend gel medium. Can you use glue? Can you use Mod Podge or can you use other kinds of adhesives? Yes, you can, but again, it will require a different approach. So let's start off with gel medium. Gel medium is what I would recommend to use on a nice clean piece of wood where there is no paint or anything on here. So I'm going to take a regular sponge brush here. Almost felt like saying SpongeBob. Okay, and you want to apply a generous amount. Now, I think this is a part that gets some people because they're used to doing other kinds of transfer methods using just regular paper and rubbing it off like a maniac. Whereas this paper requires no rubbing off when done properly. Got a little hard piece in there but you have to make sure that you have enough medium on here. Now there is a fine line between enough medium and too much. And here I'm going to explain the problems you may run into when you're first getting used to applying gel medium on a smooth wooden board like this. And that is that one an untreated piece of wood is more porous and has more absorption ability than an unpainted or a painted surface I should say. So if your wood like this here is not painted the gel medium or any other thing you might use will dry faster because it is able to absorb the moisture of the glue or the gel medium much faster than a painted surface which is less porous and will not absorb that quickly. Another thing I can see as I'm applying this is there are areas that are dry that I had missed. So what you can do is use light to reflect off of it and make sure that you have 100% coverage if that's what you want to make sure you get on the wood. Another thing too is when you use your finger you can feel that the gel medium is still wet. One of the problems some people have is that they put on so little that it gets dry and uh, the transfer cannot transfer, the image cannot transfer because the gel medium was allowed to dry. Now take a brayer and just go from the center out. Try to avoid getting gel or any glue on the back of the paper. That's, that's why usually I'll roll it out like this. Okay, you want to make sure that this is completely dried. Now, if you don't want to use a hair dryer, you can just leave it out for a few hours, let it dry naturally, leave it out overnight if you want, leave it for a week if you want, doesn't really matter. But then, when it's dry, like right now, I think it's dry enough, only a couple of minutes, that's all it took with a hair dryer, a couple of minutes. Then you get yourself, let me get a paper towel, clean paper towel, have that ready. 
get a wet brush and just wet the back of the paper like so and let, make sure it's absorbing into the paper you can see that it's sucking it up okay take your clean paper stick it on there like so just to take up the excess paper uh, excess water all right once you do that, just peel it off. Use gel medium and dry it with a hair dryer or let it sit out for a few hours and come back to it later. All right, so in this test here, we're going to use Mod Podge because a lot of people like Mod Podge. So, just grab some Mod Podge and just goop it on with your brush. Now, what I want to tell you is whether you use gel medium or Mod Podge, if you use too much, if it's too wet, the paper will wrinkle and it's just as bad as not using enough so just make sure that it's still wet when you apply the image and you'll be golden but don't use too much because that is just as bad as too little alright so there's some Mod Podge and let me get another one of these here we'll put that there in the center make sure it doesn't slide around Use my finger to get it started. Then take your brayer from the center, work your way out. And again, be sure not to get anything on the back of the paper because remember, you're going to use water to uh, soak into the paper. And if it's got glue on the back, it's going to act as a water barrier. So you don't want that. All right. So here we've used Mod Podge and we're going to thoroughly dry it, assume we left it out for hours, overnight, or if you happen to be doing this on the fairgrounds or something, for your customers, pull out your hair dryer and get it done within a couple of minutes. That was only a couple of minutes. Remember, you want to make sure that it's completely dry. If there's any question as to whether it's completely dry, then wait until you know for sure that it is completely dry. If you have it, if you have this on varnished, uh, treated wood, chalk paint, regular paint, it doesn't matter. It's very important that you make sure that it absolutely dries and it does take longer to dry on surfaces that are coated with some clear coat or whatever the case may be. So keep that in mind. You want it completely dry. With unpainted wood, it just works way faster. But you can put it on any kind of coated wood. We've done it with no problems. Okay, so this feels like it's dry. We're going to go ahead and moisten it with the water again. You can see the water just absorbs really quick into the paper. This is a cotton bond paper, so it absorbs water really quick. Okay, again, get a clean piece of paper towel so you can take up the excess. That just helps strengthen the paper for peeling it off in one peel. If you don't use a paper towel to take up the excess, it's not a big deal, but you will tear the paper and have to do two or three pills. But other than that, so here you can see I've taken up the excess. So now we'll just go ahead and we'll peel it. And as you can see, 100% transfer using Mod Podge. But it's already nice and smooth and pre-sanded. 
What you want to avoid is a surface that is not flat and smooth. And I ended up getting contacted by this individual who said that she was having troubles. The transfers were not coming off onto her wood pieces and she sent pictures and they didn't look good. Fortunately, because she's in my own backyard, I made arrangements that when her husband and her son were home, that I would come by, take a look at what the issue was. Unfortunately, I don't live next door to everybody, so I, I put a video like this together to help, help you. But I went over there and I saw exactly what the problem was. And she had these cut off wood blocks from like Lowe's Hardware. And it was very bumpy and it had these deep grooves in the wood pieces. And many of us have seen these. Uh, it's where the grain is just risen, you know, in various places. And you can take your nail and if you try to drag it, you can't because it'll get caught in those grooves. Well, this is why the transfers weren't working for her. So I says, you need a nice flat surface. So remember that if you've got deep grooves, there's no way the transfer is going to be able to get into those grooves. And so what's going to happen is you're just going to end up having areas where you have no transfer. If it's like raw wood like this, it doesn't have any kind of glossy coating or paint or anything, it's going to transfer that much faster than if you actually have a varnish on here or you have a painted surface or chalk paint or whatever the case may be. Can you transfer those surfaces? Absolutely, done it many times. But they do require a slightly different approach to doing it. Same with fabrics. Same with paper and cardboard. Each one requires a little bit of a different approach. What about canvas? I've been doing a lot of experimenting with canvas. As you can see, I've just been sticking stuff all here trying to make some kind of montage or whatever they call it. Okay, so here's a piece of canvas here. A canvas board, as you can see it says canvas panels. They call this canvas panels. This is a 12 by 24. Here's the thing with canvas is that it's not a smooth surface. It's relatively rough and yet as you can see here it did a great job transferring that Ford logo. Okay so we're going to transfer this on the canvas. Now again, you can use Mod Podge or you can use gel medium. Just make sure it's completely dry. I'm going to use gel medium. That happens to be my favorite stuff to use. And make sure you put enough down so that it's still wet, not sticky. But you don't want it too wet where it just oozes all over the place and at the same time it uh, wrinkles the paper. So avoid that. But it looks like I got a good coating here. Take up the excess there. And uh, hopefully I put enough down to cover the whole smiley. I'm going to press my finger there. Now you can see that I'm not really rushing that much, but I do want to get it pressed right away. So from the center, press out, clean the brayer, press out, clean the brayer. There you go. I got full contact. Beautiful. Now you want that to dry. Now, the thing with canvas is that it is a treated surface. It's got gesso on here, and that's the white paint look that you see on the canvas. And being a painted surface means that it's less porous. When something is less porous, it doesn't absorb as well as something that is porous. 
And so that means it takes a little bit longer to dry glue. Mod Podge is a glue, gel medium is a glue, anything that causes materials to bond together are called glues. And it takes longer for the glue to set and adhere the image when the surface is painted because it's non-porous. It, the porous area of the material has been sealed with the paint. This here, for example, this cardboard is a porous surface. If I put gel medium or Mod Podge on this cardboard and put it on this canvas, it will dry faster on the cardboard than it will on the canvas because the cardboard would actually absorb a lot of the moisture of that glue, whereas here on the canvas that's not the case. So when you're doing painted surfaces, it doesn't matter, chalk paint, uh, gesso, acrylic paint, uh, satin paints, uh, varnished surfaces, whatever the case may be, or if you're doing things like glass and metal, these things are not porous. That means you need to let whatever it is you're using as your glue to dry completely. If you rush it, you risk the chance that part of your image will not come off like we just saw the fail that happened with the 77 adhesive spray because I didn't let it dry long enough. It's still slightly tacky there. So that one is still sitting here. We'll get to it after it's dried for a while. But here we are on canvas and we use gel medium. So again, let's use some water. and soak the paper then take a dry piece of towel, paper towel take up the excess just makes it easier to peel off as one peel when you do this and then we need a part that isn't glued down and we start peeling and that's it okay now like I've mentioned before when it comes to fabric, this is not really meant to be washed. However, I wash mine, and so I do so knowing that the lifespan of the image is not really expected to be that long, but actually rather short. I am quite surprised that a lot of my shirts have lasted as long as they have, like this one here. But again, if you're doing this as a t-shirt business, this is not the right paper for it. But it does prove a point is that you can do any fabric you want. And as long as the adhesive will hold to the fabric, then you will be able to put this image using the quick transfer paper onto your bags and little fabric pieces that you glue inside your craft books and stuff. All right. Now what's very important is that when you're doing it on something like fabric here, what you need to do is you really need to cut out your image. I'll leave a little bit of a white rim on here, but not too much. You don't want to use gel medium or glue or Mod Podge if you intend on washing it. So like this t-shirt, I'm eventually going to throw it in the washer. So I'm going to use the uh, 77 adhesive. But if you're just going to do handbags and stuff, you can get away with Mod Podge, you can get away with gel medium, you can get away with school glue, you can get away with any of those things as long as you dry it completely. 
All right. Now the next thing we need to do, because we're going to deal with this adhesive, is we're going to spray it. Spray the image, don't spray the shirt. So shake it up really good, and let's see what we can do here. Okay, then as usual, use your brayer. Make sure you give this good contact all the way around. This is probably the easiest t-shirt transfer process ever because you don't iron it. You don't put it in a heat press. You just glue it with a spray and let it set up. So let's let that sit around for a few minutes and we'll get back to it in a second. Okay, let's try this. This should be interesting. Now on fabric and 77 adhesive what I found is that you are going to be tearing it off on pieces. It doesn't come off in one sheet but it does come off relatively easy. It's just you're going to have to uh, do multiple pulls. All right, I think that's probably good. So let's see if this thing's going to actually come off here. Somehow you got to get it started. That's the fun part, to be able to see what I'm doing. Okay, I'm going to put my fingers inside the shirt because that's going to help me get to the edge. There we go. That thing just tears off like butter. Once you get an edge, like that. But there you go. Look at that. Isn't that awesome? Give it a little stretchy stretch if you want. Not necessary. Note that I did not use an iron. I did not use a heat press. All I did was print out this image on my paper, sprayed it in a box, make sure you cut off the excess white, okay, otherwise you're going to have this glue image here on the sides you don't really want. As you can see here, this is perfect. Nice, perfect, round image, off center, because I'm such a knucklehead. Look, at here's the center. And I'm off to the right. Oh well. This is an experimental t-shirt. Now, you can wear this out immediately. It's going to stay on here. But at some point, you're going to want to wash this, I imagine. Unless you're going to make it a disposable t-shirt. And if so, you need to protect this image so that uh, it will last for a few washes. Now, to do that, I recommend... You know, like this Krylon Crystal Clear, take it outside, and you don't need to border it off or anything. You can spray it on your shirt, it won't hurt it. But spray it really good to give it protection so that it will resist uh, the water. It's, it's moisture resistant coating. Okay, now that doesn't mean that it's waterproof, it's just moisture resistant. Uh, this will wear off after a while, but um, you can certainly wear it for a long time, for several washes. It'll just start to fade after a while. Alright, so now the question is, well what about paper or cardboard? Well, that's actually 
uh, an easy thing to do. For example, I have a cardboard piece right here. And for some reason you want to put an image on here. It's not easy to print cardboard through your printer. Also, if it happens to be part of some kind of book or something, you're obviously not going to be able to get that into your printer. Same with paper. Uh, if you just want an image on paper, just print on the paper, right? But if you happen to have a, a junk journal or something that you want to put an image in, for example, we'll put an image in this book here. Find me a sheet of paper here to like here for example if I want to put this image in here I can't get this in my printer so situations like that um, you're going to want to transfer it with transfer paper so let me put this one aside because well you know what let's do this one first okay we're going to do this one first okay this is what I suggest for paper and cardboard paper is not only porous but it's super absorbent, which means not only is the glue going to dry way too fast, or the Mod Podge, or the gel medium is going to dry way too fast, um, but when you wet it to peel it, getting the paper all wet is no fun. You're going to wrinkle up your paper. It's a mess. I have a solution for that. And here's what you do. Take your Mod Podge, for example. I think a big guy can open a lid. Hey. And coat the area with a thin layer of Mod Podge that you plan on putting the image. Okay, so that's the first thing. It's called pre treat. So let's pre treat the paper here. And we're going to be putting a protective moisture barrier on the paper by using this Mod Podge. And here you don't have to use much. You can just brush it till it's nice and thin. Let it soak in a little bit. That's fine too. You don't care. That works great for you. Okay. Fantastic. Now we're going to dry it. Alright, perfect. And it's dry. It's completely dry. It didn't take more than a minute to do that. Now I have a nice moisture barrier, so when I wet the back of the paper, it's not going to mess up the paper, at least wherever I have this moisture barrier. You could do the whole sheet if you want, which isn't a bad idea. Alright, now I'm going to take my gel medium, because that's what I like using. You use what you want. Just remember, complete dry and you'll be fine. But I'll use the gel medium. And yes, gel medium is more expensive than uh, Mod Podge is, but there's a reason for that. Just good stuff. Okay, so give it a good coat. Not too wet, but don't let it dry on you before you get your image on there. Put our image on here like so. Use your brayer from the center out as usual. Got it too close to my little spiral things there. I hope I can get in there. Okay, and you want good contact. Alright? You want really good contact. Get the air bubbles out. There we go. Okay. Get the excess back in the jar here. Okay. Get that wet so it doesn't dry on me too quickly. And we're going to use the hair dryer. Now remember, it doesn't take long. I can feel that it's moist. All right. So I know it's not ready to come off. So we're going to dry it. All right. It doesn't take long to dry because it's paper. Paper dries really fast. It dries even faster than than um unpainted wood. Now if you try to peel this after it's dried without moisting it, you're going to be tearing paper. You don't want to tear paper, especially the paper you have in your book, right? So make sure you're going to moisture it 
we're going to moisturize this puppy. It's so coming here. Everywhere that you know you've got that gel medium on the paper, you need to get it moisture. Moistured. Moisturized. And I'm keeping it on the back of the paper. I'm not getting it on the rest of my paper there. Because remember, I want to keep that dry. And I can start to see the image start to show through the paper. I know I've got plenty of moisture on there. Again, take a clean, dry towel. Go like that so that you can get a nice peel. Woohoo! Let's get that one off. There you go. Journals and so forth. Look at the quality of that. It's as if you printed it directly from your printer onto the paper itself. Okay, so there you go. And it's on that nice water resistant pre coat that we put on here. You see my other ones too. I have this little, you can see this kind of slightly glossy edges. It's because I pre coated before I put these posters on here. There you go. So that's paper. Now, what about cardboard? Well, cardboard is paper, duh. Um, but here's the thing. Remember that you can't print white, right? This white that you see right here is the color of the paper itself. It's not the, the white toner. It's not white ink or white toner or whatever the case may be. So when you transfer it onto here, everywhere that you see that's white is actually going to be this showing through and clearly I don't want this um, color to be part of the eyeball so what do you do well here's what you do let's get our white paint in here all right let's get our brush Spread the white paint around just enough to cover the eyeballs. Got some water in here. I had water on this brush, so I'm kind of thinning it out a little bit. I think I overdid it with the paint. I did. I overdid it with the paint. Alright, so anyway, let's just do the whole thing. Alright. But you know, you know what I'm talking about. Just mask it off or whatever it is you want to do. If you don't want to have white go past the image itself on a dark thing like this. So I won't have to pre-treat it. Alright, just do that. Get it wet again. Put it in here. Let's dry it. Ah, that's good enough. Alright, let's just use this. Gel medium. Okay. dry this. Alright, let's make sure, oh it's hot. Ooh. That's got to be dry because it's hot. Ooh. Oh boy. boy. Alright. Now for the reveal, get some water. Well we need a clean paper towel. Okay, get some water on our brush. Keep it on the back of the paper itself. Don't get it on the cardboard. We didn't pre-treat that too well. So I'm just going to keep it on that paper only. Okay. Like so.
All right. That's it. So if you look closely here, you can see that when you're on dark material like this dark um, cardboard, that you're going to have some of that showing through unless you pre-paint it or spray paint the actual transfer paper itself. As long as you do it at least 24 inches away so that it comes on more of a dry paint than a wet paint. You don't want to soak the paper if you do it that way. But if you do it on the surface, you can see that the white paint I used was translucent, not as opaque. So what you see in the background is what you see in the eyeballs. If I hadn't have done this though, it would have looked more brown like this. So just make it as white as you can and then you'll be able to make your transfer come out and you can see that everything came off everything okay everything came off the paper and it peels really easy all right i'm here to help you guys so we all can have fun together see you in the next video Bye.